YouTube, baby. Your fingers move fast enough, they move well enough, and you're goofy enough on, on YouTube. This is what happens, guys. Hop in the car, watch it go wrong. This is gonna be like a, a guitarist in cars getting coffee. Like, I love that show. Here. You know, it's just so crazy to gotta be in here. Those out. <laughs> yeah. I gotta tell you, man. All right, Sam's on his way in now. So when he comes in, I'll try to capture first moments. I don't know, I'm excited, man. There he is. <laughs> oh, what's going Woo on? Yeah, How's it going, man? It's good. Bodies, dude. Yeah, I know, dude. It's like <laughs> it's like he's real. Bro. I know. It's like a <laughs> like a meat suit. Let me mic you up real quick. Let me just press this, and we can just throw that on your lapel. I'm just gonna keep this guy. You will just keep it's this. It's awesome rolling. to meet you, by the way. Oh yeah. Just to like see dude, you and I, stuff. I'm not, well. Dude, it's like meeting one of my. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> gush. All right. You're brave, dude. I can't meet. I cannot meet people that I'm a fan of. I'm totally I, like a nervous and uncomfortable, bro. But it, this whole yeah, experience yeah, yeah. has been just trying to step out of my comfort zone. And well, I'm glad you pushed me a little bit to like, like, hey, we should we should actually really do it in person because I did it with this homie and it was better. I was like, yeah, dude. Well, I wanted to capture first moments because that's one of the things. <laughs> God, it's so fucking cool. That's one of the things that happened with Adam and I. We talked for like an hour and a half before the guy did all and you, the things yeah, he so needed can to you do. All, use so all we this, missed all that, that interesting. All this cool shit exactly. that we're doing here. This is the gold right here. Exactly, Everything man. else is going to suck compared to what we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> when did you get in here? Got in um, last night around 7. Dude, you're so brave. For like doing this, because you did the you did the in person one with uh, TV, right? TV on guitar, yeah. That was the only other in person. He's a big fan of yours. He by better, the way. he fucking better be. <laughs> to that medley, and I was like, this is so awesome. So then I started listening to Super Guitar Bros, so much like Super Guitar Bros and Smooth McGroove. Then I found Sam's solo channel, so I was like, dude, this is awesome too. So he, dude, he's his shit is so crazy. He just, he covers things for himself. He just tries to get as much shit yeah, in an tell. arrangement. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so he doesn't do it for anybody. He doesn't do it to sell tabs. He just does it for himself. And yeah, I thought no, that was pretty I do it all for money. I saw you re you released that uh, Persona album. You actually, wa <laughs> you actually watch other people's, st I, I don't know. know. <laughs> no, not, I, okay. I feel like almost guilty saying this, but I don't really watch that much music stuff. Okay. Like period. At all. Okay. Like I do, I do it. But I don't, I don't sit there and watch many people's stuff. But like, I see what they're doing, uh -huh. and then I don't watch it. <laughs> or I'll click it for a little bit, but I won't sit there and watch it. I'll Is there like, some people's stuff you do watch, or you just don't watch anybody's shit? When I saw TV's stuff, I was like, this is insanity. Like, I, I forget which arrangement I saw of his. I see him doing a lot of like, he'll put like a pull off or a hammer on where I might just pick something. Like the way that he's fitting everything on the guitar, I think is really smart. So he, his stuff was like crazy to me. And then I- um, I love to hear that. I messaged him on Discord. I was like, bro, your yeah. shit is wicked. It's he crazy. I'm surprised he didn't tell us that. He, yeah, that's he's, like cause a, he's a, a sound trophy. He's dishonest, unlike me. <laughs> I tell all, dude. That's the difference between me and all the other so, tubers. Dude, I had to like, I tell, I say it how it is, dude. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I'm full of shit. You have such a magnetic and funny personality. It comes through on all I'm your loving videos. I these compliments, baby. It comes through on your albums, even on stage. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I'm out here, I, but I, I have some hardball questions. So like one of them is like, oh, good, good. how much of that is just a persona that you create to entertain us versus your real personality? There, there's definitely, it's definitely some of each for sure. I definitely can be chill, but I definitely am screwing around in my life quite often. But I know that people, people respond to it well. And I've like, I learned that really early on that if I lean into that aspect of my personality that I just get more money. 
I do, I do push it out. There is some amount of persona, for sure. Okay. But it's like I'm tapping into an aspect of myself. Like it is there. I'm not like totally putting it on. You know, I'm like pushing it to the surface more. Like in the outros and stuff. Yeah. I'll record like, I haven't done those for a while. I was gonna ask why you haven't. Why just I was, I was like, maybe, maybe it's affecting retention. When it gets to the outro, the retention goes boop. It goes down. Um, because it's like the song's over, right? Uh huh. So I thought maybe maybe I'll mess with not doing that. I think it's actually worse to not do it. I think I probably should be doing it. So it was a decision based purely on analytics. Yeah, purely, okay. purely. It was like, oh, maybe maybe it'll give it overall more retention, and then YouTube will push it out more. That's really interesting, man. Yeah. Because I, I was curious overall, like how many decisions you make purely for analytics versus yes. uh, versus um, you know just for any other reason, you know. Exactly. Um, no, the, I've, that was definitely a purely analytics-based based one. But I also got data about, um, I can, you know, you can see how many people are clicking over to the Patreon page uh -huh. um, yeah. per video. So it's definitely less if I don't do the outros. I mean, I've been watching you for years, man. And I know a lot of, a lot of people feel the same way. They they loved and looked forward to your outros. Yeah. They always yep. seemed so genuine. They ne never felt fake. And you can <laughs> tell when somebody's being fake, too, you know what I mean? Well, you know what's funny? I would record like 15 of them. Oh. So like... It seems like it's just off the cuff. But it's funny, because like, sometimes it will take, I've noticed, it, you, maybe you notice this when you're doing like, stuff where you're talking to the camera, but like, it would take me maybe several to like, shed the try hardness and get one that really feels genuine. That's good to know, man. Yeah. So you're taking multiple takes and you're just picking the most genuine one. Okay. I would literally, sometimes there would be one where like I thought I said something funnier, but one of them just felt more like organic. Um, and I think that stuff really, people connect with that stuff. But yeah, I would do like, I've got some of them, there's like 15, 20 of them that I threw away that were equally, equally as meme -y and you know, Stupid. what would be a funny idea is if you compiled all of these. <laughs> I've thought about you it. Know, shared them as just their own thing. Dude, it would be like, it would be like hours. Because <laughs> if I went back, I don't know how many, how many of them still exist. But like, I've actually legit thought about doing that. Yeah. Just compiling, compiling thrown away outros. You give off so you give off this like you don't care like everything's off the cuff, but you're actually a really meticulous cat. Oh, everything I, is very calculated with I you. I care a lot. I try very hard to seem like I don't care, and that I'm just like screwing around and fucking around. But like, that's part of the strategy <laughs> to get that. That's so smart. Fucking money, dude. <laughs> to get those sweet coins. You gotta pay for the Tesla, bro. <laughs> you do. Do you, should we start heading to the yeah for zone? sure man okay Let's cool do cool it. what advice would you give other guitarists looking to start a YouTube channel today just give up it's not gonna happen <laughs> you really have to be impressive you got a fucking you know like circus level. I feel like that's why TV shit blow up, blew up so quick. Because it's so Because it's nostalgic. so undeniable. Well, that and it's so undeniably. It is undeniable. Um, we're at, I'm actually over here. All right. Back across the street. <laughs> Let's do it. Did you use the crosswalk or did you jaywalk? What are they doing in Detroit? Jaywalk. They jaywalk a lot? I fucking jaywalk. I'm scared. Obviously, the more popular the thing is that you're doing, that's like obvious, like one to one. If your shit is more popular, like the music, it's gonna do better. Do you think it's easier or more difficult to grow a new YouTube channel, new guitar channel today? Versus when you started, oh, man, because you started in 2011. Well, there was an element of like, um, there wasn't, there's less comp competition yeah. back then for yeah, sure. For sure. What YouTube pushes out is what keeps people on YouTube. 
Like, that's all YouTube gives a shit about. Uh -huh. So, like, it can work in your favor. If you've got something that is keeping people's eyeballs on YouTube, you know, if, if your attention is really high, you're crushing on that front, you can just have a piece of content that you put out. And you don't have really many subscribers or any, and then that can get a whole bunch of attention. I think that that's possible now. It's weird though, cause like, you know, I've got like a, I got like 150, 150K subs. Yeah. And so, some of the content doesn't, it really does not do that well. Uh huh. I did that um, video where I'm trying to figure out a playing God song. Yeah, that did crazy that good. That did better than anything I've ever put out. This. Which doesn't make any sense. Or it could be that. Well, it could be that. And it took less work than anything I've ever put out. That almost had a million views, like, already, like, and it did it fast, That's right? the thing that's crazy about it, is, like, it's, like, creating a guitar cover takes, some. Um, it's a lot of work um, to, to produce even two, two minutes of something. You've got to learn the thing, you uh, have to arrange it, you have to get it good, you have to record it, you have yeah. to do the video. Um, but then I just, like, set up the camera and spent an hour recording a video that I didn't have to practice for. And it's like more people were interested in that ah. than when I put, but you know what I mean? It's pour, pour your heart and soul into a cover. It's weird. Ah, uh, it's weird. It's did you have any idea that it would blow up the way it did? No, not at all. Okay. I almost actually, that was one of the only things I've ever put out where I actually second guessed putting it out. <laughs> wow. I was like, maybe this is like stupid and this is, is a bad idea. And <laughs> I'm very glad I did. <laughs> yeah, I bet dude. You haven't done a video like that since either. I haven't, yeah. And that was like almost a year ago, I think. So you come off as a guy that does everything for the cash. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, dude. you tapped into something. You're like, eh, we're done, with, we're done with that for now. Yeah, true. That's a good point. I think I don't know myself at all. Someday you got to give me a studio tour, man. Oh, yeah, dude. Absolutely. Whenever you're comfortable with it. Today. All right, let's go. I'm gonna, dude. I'm gonna take you up Let's on it, it dude. to the Griffin household, baby. I'm gonna take you up on it. You meet my parents. I live at home. Just so everyone knows, I'm a grown ass boy. <laughs> <laughs> my friends ask me about that all the time. Does Sam live with his parents? I can't tell. Yeah, well, I absolutely do. I absolutely do. I'm embarrassed about that. Are you? Yes. See this? Is that curb rash? It's, yeah, dude. Is that the, just from? The rims come out further than the tire. Uh-huh. So if you, if you nick a curb. Generally, you're not supposed to nick a curb. That's how that works. I spent way too much time on TikTok and YouTube it's shorts. It's horrific. It's so unhealthy. I got a little Amazon Echo, okay. I think, because I want, I want an alarm clock that I can talk to because I'm always like, set alarm for, you know, 11 a.m. I, I wake up late. But what time do you wake up every day? Oh, right now, it's around like 10, 10, 11. Might lay there for an hour. Okay. Yeah. I used to wake up at like 6 p.m. and shit. It was horrible. Um, it was like depressing, you know, it'd be like in the winter. I kind of thought that you did wake up like crazy musician hours, like, yeah. um, well, I don't know, like 4 p.m. or something. That was your wake up time. I like the way you say that, like it's some, some fucking rough. <laughs> it's like 4 p.m. Like, it's like, you know, like, hardcore I feel shit, like you don't dude. go to sleep until 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like my natural state. If I don't, if I don't try to not do that, I will end up doing that. I have to like, right, like right now, I have to force myself to go to sleep. Uh, I have to force myself to like be in bed by like one. Okay. That's like my number. And then I try to read for like an hour, but half the time I just, I'm on my phone. What about you? When you? I wake up at 5 a.m. every day on the dock. Really? Dot. Yeah. That's, yeah. And I hit the gym. Dude, you're, that's amazing. I'm, just, I'm, I'm on a health kick though, you know? I mean, I got really fat after COVID. Really fat, dude. And, really? Uh, really? Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. It wasn't a good look. Decided to make a change and you know, it's all part of the whole self-improvement thing. That's really good, man. So, you started Super Guitar Bros in 2011 with Steve. Yeah. But you broke off on your own in 2015 and started Sam Griffin Guitar. What was the impetus behind 
breaking out don't, on your own. You don't even have to ask, baby. It's that sweet green. You already know it. You know how it is, everybody. <laughs> I come correct. Sweet green. You come correct. <laughs> well, it's just like... I had done solo arrangements before. Um, and like during when me and Steve were doing the Super Guitar Brothers, I mean, we still are. But before I had my YouTube channel, um, I had done some stuff on my own. So I am, when I say like it's all for money, I'm definitely joking. Yeah. Um, I definitely felt, I felt like I could. I felt like this is a, why not? I could do this. I could make stuff for one guitar. And then, you know, I could have my own Patreon page and maybe that could do well. Go Elon. Just kidding. I never do that. <laughs> I would never. There's so many Teslas where we live. Oh yeah, dude. We and so I always feel the Tesla envy because we bought a Leaf. So I don't know if you're sorry. familiar with this. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry you did that. Sorry you made that choice, dude. Where were we? It's interesting to hear from some someone like you who's been doing it for so long and has had so much so much success, you know, for over over ten years now. And I know you mentioned when we were just first chatting in the hotel that you don't watch a lot of other cat stuff. Well, they're trash. <laughs> See, like I've been doing it for so long that it wasn't like a. It, I didn't grow all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, like, okay. Right. Um, so it took you a while. So I know we talked about like TV a lot, um, TV on guitar. Yeah. But like he grew, his shit was like, like real fast, so you way faster than any of our stuff. Correct. So you've been paying t attention to TV on guitar. So I think probably, yeah, I think probably looking at him because it's, his stuff is more, he had such a recent like, he did. Um, Gerudo Valley popped fast. Yes. Yeah, and so in less than 30 days, he had over a million, three million views on TikTok, yes. a million on YouTube. Yeah. But I think like the important thing is to ask yourself like, why? Why is, did his stuff get so much attention? Why does it get so much attention? Like I watched his stuff and I, I was actually blown away by it. I was actually like, this is crazy. Like these arrangements are crazy. And anybody that watches it, like it is undeniable. He's just got so much skill and so, you know, works so hard on these arrangements, clearly. Way harder than me. I don't, well, hold on a And second. all these scrubs out here. No, I know I'm like putting them like, he I, is, just as a case study, it's really interesting. That is a really good point. It's like, why, is, why is this stuff so popular? Yeah, so. Because he's so good. I'm over he here crushes thinking so like, hard. Exactly. Like yeah. there's so many, it, oh, we're all struggling, but you're right. There is some, here's a good example of somebody who just came out of the gate and just, Knock the cover off the ball. I always use that term. I'm not even a baseball player. <laughs> what does that even mean? It means like someone balls have covers. A uh, baseball, you hit it hard. I don't know, dude. but like, yeah, it's he is a great example of somebody who got a lot of success very fast. And yeah, you're right. It's but, because it's playing. It's exactly. Of, it's like the the video is like the tip of the iceberg, and then the iceberg is years of him grinding and grinding getting his technique to a place That's where such a good point yeah where he can like whip out something like the Gerudo Valley and it's like whoa why is it so popular it's like well because he's doing it better he's doing it better than anyone has probably ever done it so it's like and that just to be on top like that if you can be undeniable like that, um, yeah, there's just like no replacement for that. And like, I'll, I'll notice it myself. So like, let's say I put double or triple the amount of work into a song. Like I just arranged, this is not out yet. I just arranged the Final Fantasy VII boss battle music. Oh, wow. You know, da -da 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 that shit. I arranged that one. <laughs> you arranged on Dude. classical guitar. Well, it's like so much work to do the arrangement. And then it's so much work to like 
for me to get it in my fingers and be able to do it. But I think per unit of effort, per unit of work, I get more of a return on that in terms of views. So I could put out an easy thing that will do, okay, it'll do fine. But I could put out something crazy that'll take me much more time, maybe twice or three times the amount of time, but get 10 times the amount of views. So the more mind blowing your piece, the more acrobatic, the, the more attention it gets. You've noticed the correlation between. For sure. And okay. then there's a correlation with obviously popularity of the song. Michael Levin asks, I'm wondering why we got two times the Sam instead of Super Guitar Bros on our Cerulean Skies. And in general, how do you decide to do a project with SGB versus Solo? Oh, dang, son. Okay, so the Cerulean Skies, this is the album with Yasunori Mitsuda. It's all Chrono Cross covers. I did a cover of, I think it's called Arnie Village or Home Arnie. a song from Chrono Cross I did this years ago and one day I was driving and I got home I parked and I saw my Facebook notifications were like popping off like I was getting a bunch of notifications and um, Yasunori who's the writer of those tunes he had reposted that video so this is how it started he reposted my home Arnie cover on his Facebook page and people were commenting on it and I was like, Whoa, no way, this is insane. Do you know how he found your stuff? No, I have no idea. Wow. But So he found it, he posted it, he said that, and then I kind of like, you know, because he said, I would like to do a guitar version of Chrono Cross one day. And I was like, hmm. And um, I posted something like jokingly, but not jokingly. I know, I know just the guy for that. <laughs> and then he messaged me, he sent me a private message on Facebook yes, Sam, I would like to move forward on this. Wow. It was like, I remember just being like in my car, just sitting there like, my brain was just like spinning in my skull. To answer your other question about like why I would choose to do something myself versus a guitar bros thing, sometimes it will depend on the complexity of something. If I think that something has, maybe it's something with three lines or it's there's so much energy in it that it seems like it would be a good good fit for guitar bros instead to have Steve doing his like rhythm stuff. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, this makes sense practically for it to be a Guitar Bros thing. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Wait, who was that? Who asked that was Michael Levin. Dude, I don't know all about that, dude. A lot of these cats are also your patrons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Truman Wilson asks, you know Truman. Ugh. For someone who is a professional guitar player, how much guitar playing do you actually do daily? That's a good question. Oh, it, was so, it so depends. The past maybe three works, weeks or so, I've barely played any guitar aside from doing an arrangement. If me and Steve have a tour coming up or a show or something, I'll practice a lot for the tour. And then um, I will go through spurts of like hyper-focused technique practice. I've got kind of a, it's not a system I came up with, but it's actually this book I read called Effective Practice for Musicians. Okay. It's by a drummer, this guy, Benny Greb. Okay. So it's, if you want to get better at technique, it's so good. It's such a good book. It really just depends. I would say probably on average, if I'm being totally honest, it's probably something like, now it's probably something like 20 minutes a day on average. I remember responding to him, I, I said, I think it's a lot less than we might think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because you are juggling so much. Yes. And one of the reasons why you're probably playing less lately and I wanted to ask you about is you're starting a guitar arranging course. So can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect from that and when do you plan to launch it? So it is being, actually, um, I'm doing the first wave of it um, live. And this, is, this happens uh, November 21st for like a, this tight-knit group of people that I've, <laughs> it's coming. It's coming soon. soon. You're, it's, so the first is live? You're doing it live? I'm doing it live the first time. Um, I did these series of interviews with people um, just to see like what people were struggling with, you know, where they wanted to be with guitar arranging. And there was some differences, but there, there was mostly similarities. So, okay, you met with a lot of, I know you had a couple rounds of the Zoom meetings, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I met, I met with a bunch of people, um, just got to know like where they're at and everything. I actually got a course on making courses. So just to get like hyper, hyper meta. Um, 
No, for sure. It's been insanely helpful. But one of their their big things is like, don't make a course without knowing exactly who it's for and that it works. And that's why you met with everybody to see what it is they needed help with. Exactly. Which sounds so obvious at face value. Exactly. But I was really impressed with how thorough you were about it. I mean, you, oh yeah, you had this whole questionnaire. You reached out to the people that actually watch you, and you're like, "Hey, what do you guys need help with?" And you didn't just mm -hmm. ask them to reply. You met with them one on yep. one. I did like something like 50 interviews or so. What was that like? It was. I was nerve wracking for me, for sure <laughs> at first. <laughs> I bet, dude. Over this crazy long period of time that I've been doing arranging. I've got a particular way of doing it that I think is that I think is cool and would be helpful for people to learn and I think it is teachable which is why I initially decided like oh yeah do a do a course you know beyond the guitar already has the arrangers academy I don't want to talk about that dude yeah you do yeah, I actually do oh, okay I love Nathan I'm always like I'm always memeing cuz I feel like he's my rival I um, mean yeah because he is. And now I'm like, I'm like encroaching on his turf. Yeah. And so yeah, you okay. are. <laughs> this is like actually so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm a member of Arrangers Academy, by the way. Just we're full disclosure. You, we're going to get you. We're going to get you to switch. There were some people that I just literally messaged on Instagram, like total strangers who had never seen any of my stuff. Because I was trying to see like, is there any interest for this? beyond my audience. And at one point it was just so much work trying to find the people and stuff. You know, you're looking through guitar hashtags and literally just like DMing people. Like, hey, are you into arranging? Are you trying to level up, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I decided maybe I could find somebody on Fiverr to do this for me. To reach out to people. To reach out to people. Okay. And then once they reached out and found people, then I would take over and I would actually be myself. Okay. Um, what would they come back with? Well, so I had one, one lady doing it, um, she it was awesome. She was finding people who were like intermediate to advanced guitar players. Oh, okay. Sending them messages. That's cool. And I freaking like the other day, I went on Instagram and I just went to look up, look at Nathan's stuff. And I, I saw that there was like a response. There was like a, he had sent me a message. And I was like, I clicked he it. He responded to you? No, no, no. But what had happened was, the Fiverr lady. She reached out to him. Reached out to him. <laughs> and the message is like, hey, hey, Nathan, do you want to increase your arranging ability? Are you interested in getting better at arranging? And he's like, he's like, um, Sam. <laughs> so I was like mortified. <laughs> I was like, and it went a couple times because like she was she was going through a script and like just not. She was just not responding to what he was saying. He was just go, she was just going through the thing. And I was, and I just texted back. I was like, oh my God, dude, I was having some Fiverr lady message people on Instagram. What did he say? He just put, he just wrote back like a, like a laughing emoji face or something. But he knows now you're coming for his lunch. He knows. Oh yeah, dude. I'm taking all of his dudes. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom, vroom. I told him all that I was soon, soon. We gotta, be, we gotta keep it tight. How would you feel about the Mediterranean place? That'd be great. Right? Move down for that? Just don't judge me for how much chicken I eat. Dude, I would, I would only judge you for how much chicken you don't eat. We're about to get that Mediterranean food, boy. Oh yeah, let's hit that shit. About to get that meat. I'm gonna run a train on this. About to break bread with Sam Griffin. This is gonna be like a g g guitarist in cars getting coffee. Getting <laughs> I love that coffee. show. I think it's rude to have your hat on in a joint like this. I don't know what the, the, the MO is in Detroit. I don't know. I usually get this um, chicken shawarma. I get chicken galaba, I get Ooh. zesty. What the fuck is quail, my dude? What is that? What is that drink? What's that? What is that? Iced tea. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just tea, but it, they have ice in it. <laughs> no, I don't drink Coke, bro. That's good. That's good. That's good. I feel like we're both like pretty health conscious. Well, we're old, bro. 
We're getting there. How, how old are you? I'm 38. Okay. Okay. So we're like we're basically the same age. You're 39, right? 37. Oh, okay. I know your dad was a musician too, a country musician. Is he proud of everything you've accomplished? Yeah. No, he he definitely is. He's always like, like I'm, I've been really focused on the arranging course lately, and he's always like, he's like, Sam, what's going on? You haven't put out, you haven't put out a song. It's been like two months. What's going on? He watches your shit. Yeah, he like yeah pays attention to it, and like him, my dad being a musician for my whole life, and him being very like, hey, if you really want to do it, like push hard, like work hard, practice and stuff. Um, he's been very supportive. That's so cool, man. Is, my dad has never seen me and Steve play. I'm really surprised. He just doesn't like going to stuff. I don't he either. I it. fucking hate going places. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, are you joking or is No, serious? I'm serious, dude. Do you, do you like going to concerts? No. Neither do I. I fucking hate going. I, I went to yours because I'm like, I want to see Sam play live. If, if I if I go to a concert, it has to be something that I love. Like I really, really want to see. Sam. Or I'm like, I don't want to be here. I'm bored. I'm tired. I don't want to stand up. And this sucks. And I want to leave. Dude. Uh, I'm. You're like the only person ever. <laughs> That is like, I've shared that feeling. I don't like too much stimulation, bro. Oh my God, that's delicious. Not bad. You wanna try some? It's delicious. Help yourself, help, help yourself, man. Do you game uh, that much these days? Not much, really. Not oh. much. I was trying to play um, Tears of the Kingdom. I couldn't finish it. I got, I got, I got the first two temples. My wife binges every. She, she my, wife, my wife plays more video games than me, but big time. That's fucking badass. She plays video games all day. Yeah. I gotta get her to stop sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I barely. I can't fire them up anymore, dude. It's just like I got too much other shit going on. That's how I feel. It's so nice to like actually meet you, and I, I had so many like I was I made a lot of you know you fill in assumptions. You fill in, you, yeah, you fill in the gaps to shit you don't know. You know. Thank you for like being being interested in just me and like this whole thing that's happening right now. Just you coming out and talking to me and stuff. I feel it honestly just for my fucking like ego and shit. It's really it's really nice. You know. Really. That's, yeah. Fuck yeah. To have somebody ask about you and like. You know, it just feels, it feels cool. It's like extremely flattering. It's genuine, dude. And honestly, I'm not alone. There's a lot of people out there that love what you do awesome. and want to learn and want to know more about you. Yeah. You're like a, you're, you're, you're a man of mystery. <laughs> you disappear a lot. You go dark a lot. And I always wonder, what is Sam doing right now? I'm just being lazy. <laughs> That's really what it is. I'm just fucking being lazy. You're not on Discord very much. Yeah, dude, I fucking... Your presence is missed. I suck. Yeah, dude, I suck. Is that by design or is it just too much to handle like bandwidth? I'm just, I'm just, it's just being lazy. It's just like, I, I just don't fuck around on Discord that much, period. Yeah, like some people, there's like a little, little Ask Sam channel and like I get to it eventually usually, but sometimes I'm like, oh my God, like I haven't, I haven't even looked at this in like three weeks, sometimes more, which is obviously not good because like these are fans and everything and like they really they care and yeah now you feel bad now mm -hmm. i need to though i should feel bad <laughs> it's appropriate fuck them dude fuck those <laughs> fuckers dude i'm curious like what your impression is of the other guys that you interviewed like if you can say like you know maybe maybe what you liked or respected or you know, not not regarding the, the guitar stuff, but just like talking to them. I will say one thing that has really surprised me, and each of you shares this in common, is how just fucking cool and down to earth and real everyone is. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. Have you been recognized in public? It happens like once a year. Has anybody asked for your autograph? Not, not in public, no. <laughs> I mean, when we're at shows, we'll sign CDs, but that's different. 
but not out in the wild. Not in the wild. Every so often in the wild, it'll happen, but like super rare. I was just in a, a Meyer, which is like a grocery store we have over here. And I walked by a guy and he was like, Super Guitar Bros? Wow. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, dude. I was like more excited about it than he was. I was like, dude, nobody notices me. This is amazing. Like, it's so good to meet you, dude. You know, it's just so crazy to gotta be in here. Those out. <laughs> yeah. I gotta tell you, man. I've been watching this room. We out these here. walls very well. These walls. And you kind of you redid this. This wasn't as nice. Yeah, because before I had um, I had a light. I had like a top light, hair light or whatever. Yeah. And since my hair is on the way out, you're already there, bro. But you see, you got a nice head. I haven't had. <laughs> My head's all fucked up. What are you talking about, dude? Bro, feel like literally feel this, feel this, feel this right here. I'm about to, I'm about to feel Watch, Sam okay. Griffin's head. Okay, and film your reaction. To film my reaction. Film your reaction when you feel my the top of my head. What am I feeling for? Just feeling it. Just fucking feel right here. That's kind of what I was expecting. Well, what are you feeling? I mean, it's you're feeling a fucking point. I've got oh, a no, cone I didn't head. Feel, I didn't feel the cone. It's a cone, dude. You feel oh, that? Oh, okay. I didn't even. I mean, now that I'm feeling for it, yeah. So I shaved my head once, and it was it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was all fucked up. <laughs> you don't understand, okay? Like I've been watching you play this guitar for so long, man. <laughs> really nice tone dude it's your guitar bro oh yeah bro yeah dude oh man dude you sound really good it always sounds good when somebody's playing your guitar that's the hard part right at the top yeah It was kind of okay. When you did that in LA at El Cid when I saw you, you fucking nailed it. Did I do it, it good? You fucking nailed it. This this right here is, I probably worked on that more than anything. And it's still like, I've been working on it for years. Let's try something real quick. Your, your ear is really good. Okay, okay. If I turn around and play a chord, you can probably... Can I find it? Yeah. Okay. Pretty quick, Let's right? Let's do it. Okay. We're going to give you a couple easy ones first. Okay. <clears throat> and then, you know... You just see. This is fun. Wait. <laughs> I already stumped the guy. That's it. Okay, that was good. Okay. Okay, let's go do more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I know that chord though. Anyway, okay, there's two more. Okay. Yep. Got him. I'm gonna throw you for a loop now. Okay. Yeah. Got him. Wow. That's fast, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah, baby. Well, you're also arpeggiating them, which is very nice. Oh, okay. Then you. One more. That's not fair. You... Wait, oh, fuck it. <laughs> That's Is that it. not right? No, that was it. Wait, do another one. Okay. Like as a block. Wait, do it again. Boo. Um. I hear those first. That, yeah, I mean, and that's then do pretty... it, And then do it again, then I start thinking about the inner shit, kind of. So now I'm hearing that one. Wow, okay. Yeah. All right, give, give me one. Okay, okay, okay. 
All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah. I'm already stumped. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay, how about this one? Yeah. Here you go. Okay, Sam Griffin, Roschiato, continuous Roschiato attempt. What do you think of uh, TV on guitars, Rascados. I don't want to talk about that right now. I don't want to talk about him. I'm mad at him right now. It's really about, really what, what makes you a good guitar player is what you will be able to do. In the future. So what I'm going to be able to do in the future is way better than any of you guys. So. Not what you can do now, but no, what you could do in the future. No, nah, no, that doesn't matter. Okay. We, you got to think long term. Okay. So I look at someone like you, uh -huh. and I see what this guy's going to be able to do in the future. Mind-blowing. I look at someone like Nathan. He might be better than us right now. <laughs> He's not going anywhere, though. He's staying right where he's at. You know it's true. Everyone watching knows it's true. TV too, dude. He's peaked, man. He's way up here. He's at his prime. Oh, yeah. We haven't hit our prime yet. He's not going anywhere. He's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We got here ready. Hey. That wasn't bad. That was kind of cool, guys. All right, dude. This has been fun. Thank you. This has been amazing. Thank, Thank you, you guys. for all. Where can, for those that don't know, where can they find you? Check me out. Sam Griffin. Guitar, put it in Google, YouTube, put it in YouTube, find me on YouTube, <laughs> do it every day, put it in YouTube, that's where it is always, that's where Thanks, it's man. dude, that this has just, been awesome, that was awesome, dude. it's been really fun, thank you, hell yeah. Hey Nathan here guys, <laughs> stop dude, you guys excited? Fortnite ruined my channel, guys. Poor me, I got 15, <laughs> I got 30 million views on a video. Poor guy. I feel like I shouldn't have shared oh, that story. Poor guy. <laughs> I, can I get you two in the same room someday? Oh, I, dude, I would love that. Okay. I would love to meet I'll you. arrange that. We can, that we can arrange awesome. that. So you're, you're just a hair taller than me. Actually, maybe about an inch or two. Especially when I, if I really fucking get up there. Yeah. See, he's taller than me. I'm like, damn it. You got the height too. You got the chops, the height. <laughs> Fuck, man. What do I got?